morning, good morning, and welcome to the 21 of Covenant Praying. As I listen to that song, it's hard to stop it each morning because the more it plays and the more it ministers, the more I am realizing just the sheer dependence that we need to have upon God, him and him alone. So welcome to today one, 21 of praying. I'm so excited that today is going to be led by our men. And I laughed last week when I looked ahead to see what day 21 is. And day 21 is live life lit. And for those who don't know, this is something that the Lord gave me almost eight years ago when I began the Desire of the Fire conferences. It was something that he placed in my heart. And it came at a time when I was really, really in a, not in a good space and place. I love Lord, but I was so unhappy and so discontent in in my assignment. I thought that I was called to so much more and I wasn't seeing it. I wasn't experiencing it and I was really struggling. And the Lord just began to share with me that there was still more to do and that I just needed to fan the flame. And so he sent me on this journey to learn what live life lit means. And it has forever changed my life. And so I'm excited today to see and to hear what the Lord says to the men, because this is something to all of us. It's a call and it's a charge to all of us. And so I'm excited today to yield the, the floor to them. But I just want you to take a deep breath. I want you to breathe in and exhale, because I'm not sure what type of space or place you're in right now. I'm not sure if you're discontent. I'm not sure if you're not satisfied. I'm not sure if you're seeking things in your life or believing for things that haven't shown up yet. I'm not sure where you are, but no matter where you are, whether today we find you completely dark or today we find you dim or we find you bright, wherever you are, God has something to say to you. And no matter how light you are, or bright you are, how dark you are or how dim you are, there is another level. There is another level. And so before we yield the floor over to the men today, I just want to plant Leviticus 6, 13 in your heart. Leviticus 6, 13. And the Amplified Bible is the one that stood out to me because it says, The fire shall be burning continually on the altar. It shall not be allowed to go out. I'm going to read that again. Leviticus 6, 13. The fire shall be burning continually on the altar. It shall not be allowed to go out. And I wanted to plant that in our hearing this morning because living life lit isn't a suggestion. It's a requirement for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, for those who have resurrection power dwelling on the inside of us. We are called to live lives lit. And if you were a part of walking through the word on yesterday, all I could do is smile to see how God is literally weaving all of this together as we align with him because yesterday we talked about being light we talked about being salt and then today just another confirmation and another reminder to focus on living a life lit so lord we thank you for just your word we thank you for your confirmation we thank you for how you continuously show yourself strong and mighty how you remind us over and over that you are in the details and God, we don't have to figure stuff out. All we have to do is fix our eyes on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We don't have to find our own way. We just got to find the strength to keep looking to you and to set our eyes upon you and to trust you in all things, for all things, and with all things. So today, God, we thank you that this is already a prepared space and place and that you're already here. We yield the floor to you, God. You be our teacher. You be our intercessor. And God, I thank you that you're going to use the men powerfully to usher us on this path. We know this is the day you've made, God, and we come here today rejoicing and being glad in it because you alone are worthy. Before we even get into prayer, just take a moment to worship God in your own way. Just honor him and praise him for who he is to you what he's done for you. Just take some moments to just to be with the Father and to love on him with his own words. I mean, tell him about his nature and his character. Who is he right now to you? Is he healing? Is he provision? Is he strength? Is he hope? Is he health? 
just bask in who he is. Reverence his nature. Celebrate his character. Have your way, Jesus. Lord of Lords, the great I am. God, I thank you that you're every single thing I need you to be, even when I don't even know I need it. God, I thank you for strength and wisdom and discernment for your presence, God. for every promise that you've made in Christ Jesus, which is yes and amen, Lord, we thank you. Have your way, Lord. Thomas, would you open up with your prayer point and your scripture? Uh, yes, good morning. Good morning. Um, my scripture this morning It'll be coming from Matthews 13 and 16. And it says, You are the salt, and the, you are the salt for the whole human race. But if salt loses its saltiness, there is no way to make it salty again. If it has it has become worthless. So it is thrown away, thrown out for people to trample on it. You are the light of the whole world. A city built on a hill cannot hide. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a lampstand where it, and puts it on a lampstand where it gives off light for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. And my script, um, my prayer point is light it up and let us pray. God, you said that we are to let our light shine so that others may see and glorify the Father in heaven. Lord, you said I've been going to church now for 20 years. He said, what are you doing with all of that light? Are you bringing it home and putting it on a bowl? God says, whether we're timid or outgoing, you're called to be a light to the people around you. That's only possible if we take time to interact. God says he wants to put us on the table of this world where everyone can see our light. But when he does that, people are going to see all of us. People are going to see all of us. So before we can be a light to others, we have to take a look at our own life. Has sin dull our light? If so, we need to ask God for his forgiveness to help in changing our hearts. We'll never be perfect, but we need to address our sin. There are a lot of hurting people in this world and we need to let our light shine. A lot of times we don't want to leave the comfort of our homes, but remember God left heaven to come to earth for us. So no matter where we are, where we at work, the grocery store, walking in the neighborhood, God is calling for us to let our light shine for others to see and say, hey, I remember that guy. He used to stand out here on the corner and drink beer with us, cuss, and act crazy, act crazy, but he don't do that no more. We still have to go back, but not to show off, but to let others see what their life could be 
if they yield over to God and give him, remember God is only looking for the glory. So he wants those same people to see that there is a way out. But, but we have to allow our light to shine so they can see and give God all the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thomas. It's one word that stood out um, for me is, is comfort. When you talked about not wanting to leave home or not wanting to get uncomfortable. I know for me personally, that is has always been a challenge for me is stepping out of what's comfortable to allow my um, my light to shine. And letting our light shine is not always comfortable and it's not always convenient. Not at all. It's um it um at times can can seem overwhelming because you know all you want to do is go in the store get what it is that you need to get and leave. All you want to do is just go to work, do your job, go home. <laughs> Simple things that we just want to be able to do and just, just be. Um, but God has called us to so much more than that. He is, uh, he's called us to be light. And, and so that means that, that the light that's on the inside of us is supposed to light the way for others. But if we're always in such a hurry to, to take care of business or do whatever it is we need to do, and we don't stop to allow our light to, to shine or to radiate on those around us, then what good is it? As he said, Putting our light under a bowl does no one any good. Not even the people in your home. Not even your own family. How has your family suffered because you've kept your light under a bowl? How have those close to you suffered because you refuse to allow your light to shine even at home? Let's not even talk about shining out in public at work in the marketplace, wherever we go to do business, how about at home? <laughs> how about at home? How often do your kids, do your, your spouse see you praying? How often do you pray over them? When they come to you with something's not feeling good, do you stop and pray? What's your response? Is your light shining or is it kept under a bowl because it's not convenient? These are the things we have to ask ourselves when it comes to being light here in the earth. Just reflect on that. Jot some things down in this time of prayer. Continue to take some time to write down some things that God is revealing to you, that he's speaking to you in this time, in this moment. Because those things can be very critical to your growth, to our growth. Joshua, if you are ready, sir, could you uh, please share your scripture? in your prayer point. Yes. So my prayer point is the cleansing light. This is from first John chapter one, starting on verse five. 
So this is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We say that we have not sinned. We make him a liar. And his word is not in us. And Father God, we thank you. Thank you for today. And we thank you for your light. God, like the rising sun, when we see that light, God, we know that it's a new day. God, when we see your light, for the first time, God, we know that there is a new day created in us. That we aren't the same as we used to be. That things are different because, God, we're in your light. But, God, we also ask that you use that same light to reveal every nook and cranny of our spiritual life, of our sin nature. God, let us see every single thing that's ugly about our walk with you. The places where we mess up, the places that we're struggling to gain a stronghold against, a footing against, God, the places that we want to hide from you, the places that we want to hide from each other, the places that we don't want people to see. God, the rooms of the house that we keep dark because we haven't cleaned it in a while. But we ask that you shine your light on it, that you make it vividly and abundantly clear to us, God, where we need to work on some things. Because, God, as you said, this light isn't, a light to condemn us, but it's a light to show us. And, it, and you even said in this, these verses that we read that you're just and righteous and that you'll forgive us of our sins. God, help us not to, to hide our sin and try and convince ourselves that it's not sin. And convince ourselves that we are walking in the light when we're trying to hide it and throw darkness over what we don't like about us. We're going to reveal it so that we can ask for forgiveness for it. Reveal it so that we could begin to work on it. Reveal it, God. God, some of us have sinned that's been in the dark for so long that we forgot it was there. So reveal it to us, God, so that we could ask for forgiveness, so that you could begin that good work in our heart. God, because you said when we do that, that we're able to have fellowship with one another. God, give us your light therapy. That light therapy that cures all, that light therapy that heals all, that light therapy that fixes all. God, reveal to us the relationships that we're letting dominate our lives in sin. Reveal to us the hate that we have in our heart for somebody else that we forgot was there because we had kept it in the dark for so long. God, reveal to us every nook and cranny and every single piece of dirt, God, so that we could begin to ask for forgiveness, so that we could begin that light cleansing process. And God, we ask that we don't deceive ourselves, that we don't try to convince ourselves that, that, ain't, that it isn't sin. Help us to not convince ourselves that we are living in the light when more of the house is dark than it is lit up. And we just ask that you continue to do this good work in our heart, God, so that we may have fellowship with you, so that we may have fellowship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and with each other.
We ask this in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Man. Light therapy. <laughs> How many of us need to go to the therapist? How many of us have convinced ourselves that we are walking in light, that we're being light? We're totally convinced. But as Josh has shared, darkness consumes us because of relationships, because of sin, because of uh, unchecked heart, unchecked issues. How can we, how can we say that we are light and being light when we have things in our heart that we know do not radiate light? How can we say that? When we walk in a room, when we walk in a room, does that room light up or does it go dark? When people see you coming, do they see light coming or do they see a dark cloud coming their way? Cleansing. What areas in your heart, what areas in your life are you walking in complete darkness? and denial. Darkness and denial. What areas? What areas in your life, in your heart, do you refuse to confront? Because you are so, so entangled In sin. What areas? What areas of your life? I can't even begin to talk about being being light when we're walking in darkness. So let's begin to address those areas in our life that need attention. And ask God to come in and and do a work in us, but we have to allow Him. We have to allow Him in. We can't be that light on the table. <laughs> if we're walking in darkness. Light therapy. <laughs> Light therapy. I want to share with you um, scripture coming out of Second Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 5 and 6 says, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In the very beginning, God spoke and he said, let there be light. And there was light and that light 
shone out of the darkness. And that same light is in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the light that's on the inside of us is to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Our light is to shine, to give that knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. How will others come to know who Christ is if our light does not shine? How will the world benefit from my presence here on this earth? What good am I to the kingdom if my light is not shining so that others come to the knowledge of the glory of our Father in heaven? Our purpose is so much greater than just being nice and being kind and getting a good job, making a good living, raising a family. Those things are great. Those things are great. And they're honorable. But we have a light that shines in our heart to give light to others. We start at home. We take it on our jobs. We take it to the barbershop. We take it to the beauty salon. We take it to the grocery store. We take it to the bank. We take it to the park. We take that light everywhere we go so that others come to the knowledge of the glory of our Father in heaven. As you're praying, ask God to reveal those areas in you where you're not allowing him to shine through. Where are you not allowing your light, the light to shine in your life? And how can you be better? This is no, this is no condemnation. There's no condemnation. This is just an opportunity to get it right. An opportunity to simply flip the switch. That's all you got to do. The same way you go into a dark room in your house and flip the switch. That's all you have to do is just flip the switch and just let your light shine. Just allow your light to shine. Take a moment and just reflect over God's goodness and his grace and how you, how we can let our light shine. Just imagine if all of us allowed, allowed our lights to shine at the same time. What would this world see? What would this world see if all of our lights are shining? Take a moment and reflect on that. As we're sitting in this powerful word and this powerful revelation, the word I think Josh spoke about denial. I think that was in what Thomas shared, is there denial? It was in what Eric said, is there denial? I think before we close out today, we need to ask God to shine the light in the areas that we're in denial. 
Where have we been deceived? We have been so focused on allowing the outside light to be bright. But the reality is some of your inside lights are dim. Some of the inside lights are dark, but we have perfected showing light to others. It's almost kind of like an artificial Christmas tree. It looks alive, but it's not. Are there areas in your life that you've convinced yourself that you look lit, but you're really not? Are there areas that you're dark? Illuminated, Jesus. Are there areas that you're dim? You used to be dark. You're not completely lit, but you partially. Maybe there's they're dim because of compromise. And then I just want us to really come off tonight, or come off the off a of mute and talk to God about what does it take for you to be dazzling? How do you go from darkness to dim to dazzling where you're reflecting the light of his glory, where the light on the inside of you is shining so bright that it's radiating for the world to see. You can sit it on top of a hill and people can see it. You can put it inside of your house and it lights it up. I want us to come off of mute and ask the Lord, how do you become dazzling in his glory? How do you reflect the light of who he is so that the glory of the Lord is on you? When you walk into a room, you light it up. You walk into a room and the temperature change. You walk into the room and the atmosphere change because the glory of the Lord is upon you. Come off of mute and you need to talk to God. Talk about the areas that you're dark. Talk about the areas that you have, but then Thank ask you, him Father. to make you dazzling. Thank you, Father. Dazzling Thank you, Father. that nobody can deny Thank you. Thank you for all the situations. Thank you for all the situations. Thank you for all the situations. Thinking about how do I come from darkness to light? I think we waste for some time, but I know it's more than that. I truly show us. So I do. Showing me how I got to be that way. Tell me about what I need to do. Lord, we thank you today that this brightness, this dazzling, it is not of ourselves, but it's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in us flowing out of us. This brightness has nothing to do with how much word we know. This brightness has to do with us knowing you. It's a choice to be bright for Jesus. So God, help us choose to shine in the light of your glory. God, help us to choose to keep the fire on our altar forever burning. And when it starts to go out, for us to be bold enough to get close to someone else and say, I need a little bit of your fire. God, may we realize that we're like hot coals and you keep the coals together and the fire keeps burning, but you pull the coal apart and you pull it separate from everything else and it goes out. God, help us to realize we're designed for community. We should be shining light together. We should be radiating light together. God, help us to be bold enough to realize when we walk in the room, we can't afford to shrink back. You didn't shrink back on the cross. How dare we shrink back and minimize the anointing that's upon us? You didn't minimize anything. You didn't even open your mouth. You took a beating that you didn't deserve. You died a death that was on us. So how dare we shrink back? How dare we hide? How dare we minimize the anointing that you put upon our lives? God, make us brave. Make us bold. 
Help us to realize that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes, my personality may be this, but I can still have that personality and be powerful. Yes, my past may have been this. I can have that past trauma and drama and I can still be powerful. God, help us to shake ourselves loose from the stuff that's covered us. God, some of us have been living under blankets for so long, we don't even know it's dark. We've been covered with the things of this world, and we've been covered by the weight of this world that we don't even know what it's like to live free. We don't even know what it's like to live lit because we've allowed other people tell us who we are and to tell us what we are, to tell us how far we can go and to tell us who we can be. But I bind the hand of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that we're snatching off every label. We're snatching off every lie. We're snatching off everything that gets in between us shining bright for Jesus. God, make us dazzling. God, I declare that we're so bright. That when people look into us, they see your reflection. Kind of like the silversmith. Kind of like when they're purifying gold. They say it's ready when you can see the reflection. God, I pray that our lives are so bright, that we're so radiant, that your reflection is bouncing off of us. God, help us to be reminded in this moment, we're not who we used to be. There's some things we've all done that the enemy would love to accuse us. But I, God, I thank you that who we used to be, what we used to do, who you did it with and where you did it is under the blood of Jesus. So forgive yourself. I can hear the Lord saying, forgive yourself because I got work for you to do. Forgive yourself and set yourself loose. Set yourself on fire and people will come watch you burn. And as you're burning, the incense, the smell, the aroma, everything coming off of you will point people to the goodness of Jesus. May the fire on our altars never burn out. And God, help us to realize in this moment, it's our responsibility to feed the fire. It's our responsibility to feed the fire. God, I think back to my grandparents' house and they had the big wood heater. And my grandfather would get up and feed the fire. Every so hours to every so few hours to make sure the heat temperature never went below what was comfortable for my grandma. God, may we feed the fire so that the temperature in our lives never go less than what you require of us as sons and daughters. May we take responsibility to feed the fire. Even when we don't feel like it, feed the fire. When it's uncomfortable, feed the fire. When it's inconvenient, feed the fire for no other reason than you're worthy and no other reason than you choose to trust us to do what you've called us to do. So God, we thank you for the fr for fresh anointing, a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for reminding us we have a job to do. You've called us to be light, light in dark places. You've called us to be light in the most uncomfortable places. You've called us to be light in places a lot of us don't even want to go. But God, when we told you yes, we signed a blank check and we told you we trusted you. Even if it didn't look like we wanted to look, we'd still go. We even called out like Isaiah, send me, I'll go. I'll be a lighthouse. So God, forgive us for being upset about the places you've planted us. In the situations you planted us that we don't necessarily want to be. In the situations that we're having to walk through with that we really didn't choose and we didn't want. But God, help us to realize in this moment when we said yes to you, we trusted you. So even when we feel weak and we feel weary and we are dealing with some I don't want to, your grace is still sufficient. Lord, we praise you for these mighty men. We praise you for these mighty men who will open up their hearts and bleed for us. May their example be a reminder to women who are believing for their husbands to be saved and to walk in power that, you know what, this is a testimony of what God can do. For those women who are believing God for a husband, God, I pray that in this moment that they realize it is their job to get so lost in your word that a man has to be in the word to find them. God, I pray that even now that as these women have heard these men speaking so powerfully and so transparently, 
over them and in them, that walls from abuse from men and walls from abandonment from men, that the walls are, are going down a little bit. And they're realizing in this moment that there are godly men out there who, who honor God, who love their wives, and who prioritize their families. So God, I thank you for the reminder. I thank you for their example. And I thank you for their transparency. Because so often women are desiring to hear their men be vulnerable. And God, I pray that today, Thomas, Joshua, and Eric's vulnerability is planting seeds of healing and hope in the women that are on this call. And it's stirring faith to the men who are sitting with these women and listening to the prayers go forth. God, I pray that things are changing in the atmosphere, that things are changing in marriages, and that things are changing in people's hearts as we continue to show up faithfully to seek your face. God, we declare that today, every church that's lifting the name of Jesus, every church that's proclaiming the gospel, that people will cry out, what must I do to be saved? That people will walk out of bondage and walk out of darkness into your marvelous light. And their lives will never, ever be the same in Jesus' name. We thank you when we commit this day into your hands. And we declare that your perfect will is being done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Until then, do you on max in Jesus. We're going to hang back in the Zoom room for a little bit to have some conversation and to have prayer for those who have special requests. So God bless you. And have an amazing day.